So before I start this, I know that not everybody on the channel is a big fan of anime, and I'm not either. That's a lot! But for anybody who is newer to the channel, one of the first real series I did here was on the history behind Girls and Panzer. And although the plot is not great, and it does have some of those same anime tropes, this is my ass. There's real attention to detail to the history that's in it, and I was very surprised by that and compelled to make the series. And those videos were some of the first ones that brought people to the channel and really began my following. So as a thank you to all the OG fans from way back then, I'm going to do one more of the History Behind Girls and Panzer video. If this isn't really your thing, I totally get it. That's why I did two videos this week, to make sure there was something for everybody. So now that that's out of the way, let's just jump in. This meme fucking sucks. Oh, also, St. Gloriana's Gaming College and OC Gangster have lent their shitposting and voiceover talent. Be sure to check them out after the video. Oh, and one last thing for real. This episode is sponsored by the game Panzer Matals. Stick around at the end for a wild ride about that. What is this nonsense? I can't believe I paid six dollars for this! Quiet! This is the best part! That's it. I'm out of here. This video is the biggest load of hoo-ha I've ever seen. Why do you insist we watch this stupid thing? Am I the only one who understands the complexities of this ambitious cinematic masterpiece? This movie isn't stupid! You're stupid! <laughs> oh, Billy, why you gotta be like that? <laughs> The episode opens with the entire Ori team atop the bridge on the River Kwai, as it's being destroyed. Also, if Girls and Panzer is new to you, and this all seems fairly dangerous, in one of the early episodes is explained that this sport is safe through this scene. They use live rounds and matches, but they're used with an emphasis on the participant's safety. Which is both vague and doesn't explain scenarios like this. Anyways, they're being attacked from unknown enemies, and Monocle Girl is freaking out. Turns out that was all just a flash forward, though. Pray! And the episode really begins with a handful of Goliath track mines crawling around the school's campus. The Goliath was developed by Germany in 1942 and saw service for the rest of the war in either an electrically powered or gas powered variant. They were generally used as anti tank or anti personnel weapons, although most of the time, due to being very susceptible to small arms fire, they would rarely make it to their target, and that, combined with the high cost to produce them, had the Germans cease production by 1944. There are a lot of them still around, though, with at least one example in most major tank museums. In Girls in Panzer World, though, they're being used as some kind of sonar device to search for a tank by a team headed up by Monocle Girl. They very quickly locate what looks to be one, but are interrupted by some people telling Monocle Girl that she can't go to college or something. Which is apparently a big enough deal to make the news, and everybody starts freaking out about it. But hey, in the background there's a Saint Shimon. I'm not a big plot fan for this series, but basically Monocle Girl needs to win a tankery tournament as a team leader to get into college because her grades are bad and that's what's going to be the core conflict for this series. And I just have to say that it is great to see the writers of this show really branching out and trying new things. Can't wait to see where this new tank tournament plotline goes. I'm sure it'll be groundbreaking for the series. To find the new tank, they need to go into the lower decks of the school ship where they detected it. Which is apparently a huge slum where all the slacker students and one of Gene Simmons' long-lost kids live. And for anybody who hasn't seen Girls in Panzer or my previous videos on it, I'm sorry for the mental trauma that last sentence caused you. The world building here is strange. After some anime shenanigans- <laughs> Miho and the gang wind up in some kind of dive bar, and the students there tell them that they will reveal the location of the tank if each of them completes a challenge against one of them. And they're all loosely based around their positions in the tank they drive, and they start out kind of believable. Like, I guess driving a tank would give you some finger strength to be better than the average thumb wrestler, but being a tank commander giving you super spinal strength is a little out there. I guess Spirit Girl knowing how to untie a sailor's not makes sense, though. I'm sure her tank knowledge is matched by naval knowledge. In the process, though, Miho lays out one absolute unit of the sailors, prompting them to forego the whole thing and just shank a bitch for roughing up their bar. While backing away, Yukari produces a German grenade from... somewhere. I have several questions. In preparation to take down as many of them with her as possible. All is saved, though, when Captain Morgan steps in to stop the fight and challenges Hana to a drinking game, which she is good at because she's a tank gunner. It's it's not really that well explained. Impressed that Hana could drink Admiral Nelson under the table, the Sailor Scouts reveal the location of the tank and agree to be its crew. I hope it's a Bob Semple, I hope it's a Bob Semple. Then there's a bit of plot where we see characters from other schools with the British on their ship, the Soviets on an NKL-2642 Arosani fan-driven reconnaissance snowmobile, the Americans transporting a tank in a Sikorsky CH-54 Tarhi, probably said that wrong, the Germans in a shack on the Osfron, I guess, with some loser sitting by herself, the Italians holding a rally in Rome, the Japanese in a classroom that looks really similar to the ones I've seen in Swords films of Japanese tank schools, which is really cool. <laughs> 
and the Finns in a cottage with a BA-10 armored car outside, all talking about how they plan to win the upcoming tournament. With the exception of the Finns who are discussing the pros and cons of even joining, stating that winter is a time of rest, we next see the drawing for the Tankery Tournament, where Ori is matched up with BC Freedom Academy, who are the show's equivalent to the French that are seen fighting amongst each other. Which I was going to say was a reference to a specific thing, but it could be a reference to a ton of things. It seems like France just has revolutions in its free time. The one with the lighter complexion also calls the one with the darker complexion a transfer student. No idea what that could be about. While Marie Antoinette reincarnated discusses the pros of eating cake, and Yakuri explains the divide between the school's aristocrats and commoners. So, yeah, pretty dead on for France. We then see another one of Yukuri's infiltration films produced by Lucasfilm, starting with her being dropped off in a Burget G11E helicopter. God, I can't pronounce things. Next to Notre Dame Cathedral. The commoners and the aristocrats are fighting again, this time more riot style, over what is served in the cafeteria. She heads to the tank storehouse where she sees an FT and the tankery team fighting over what the flag tank will be, as Marie continues to eat cake. Oh my god, her name is actually Marie. And Yukari leaves after being roughed up in a riot. Fast forwarding to the match with some Kawasaki KI-78 Ken 3s and Yokosuka P1Ys flying overhead as referee planes, a 40mm Bofors AA gun starts the match with all the other schools in attendance. You then see the new tank. Ah oh, fuck, I want a Bob Semple. A World War I British Mark IV, and one of the very first tank designs to see battle. The Mark IV was one of the many British rhombus tank designs that changed warfare on the Western Front in World War II and saw service to the end of the war, although becoming outclassed by more maneuverable tanks with turrets in the interwar period. In the show, they rig it up like a ship because land ships. Get it? After a little more plot, you formally meet the French team. Made up of three different tank models, and I'm going to hand it off to St. Gloriana's Gaming Academy and OC Gangster to tell you about them. The S-35 was a pre-war French cavalry tank that saw service in the Battle for France. Armed with a 47mm gun, it was a heavy version of the similar two-man type tanks that the French army had various models of, with heavier armour to combat modern anti-tank guns and space for an additional man as a radio operator. After the fall of France in 1940, S-35s were used in various roles by many of the Axis powers, as well as a few scenes service in North Africa and a handful by a French mixed tank division that was almost compromised on a few Allied designs. The ARL-44 began its life being designed somewhat in secret by the French government under occupation. After the liberation of France, the country wanted to maintain its great power status and felt it could do so by contributing as much as they could to the war efforts in the months that remained. Tank development was a huge part of this because all of their pre-war designs that France had were now horribly outdated. But by the end of the war, only a wooden mock-up had been completed, and the 60 that were eventually built were done so post-war. Because France was out of the tank designing game for so long, the ARL-44 ended up being a mishmash of old and new components and some from other countries, including a suspension based off one of their Char B, a German Maybach HL230 V12 petrol engine, and a 90mm DCA-45 gun housed in a steel turret made from the scuttled battleship Dunkirk. Overall, the ARL-44 was mostly a disappointment and served primarily as a lesson on how to build heavier vehicles and they saw no major action during their short service life. The final tank, in the flag tank in the show, is a Renault FT. This French tank from World War I was the first to feature the typical layout of tanks you see today, with a driving compartment, fighting compartment, and engine compartment, and found great success on the battlefields of World War I, being copied or exported to almost every major nation after the war, along with service during World War II and some service into the late 40s in some Arab conflicts. The actual battle portion of the episode is kind of short, but it begins with the French team continuing to fight internally before they split off, and the Tiger P and Type 89 going out to scout where they are. The Mark IV manages to keep up with the rest of the tanks when it should be far too slow to do so, continuing the show's tradition of not paying attention to top speeds. Once spotted by the scouts, the French then begin to put some sort of plan into action, and begin firing on the scout tanks. Ori's main force crosses the bridge we saw earlier to kill the flag tank for what looks like a very easy victory but the French team has drawn them into an ambush on the bridge, putting them in the situation we found them in in the opening scene. The ambush also includes this scene, which makes no sense as the FT had a one-man turret, so either there's another person crammed in there or she's firing the gun unaimed with her foot. To rescue the trap team, the Tiger team conquers its worst enemy, a hill, but Miho does not see them getting there in time. So the Mark IV deus ex machina is them away off the bridge, Is anime, and the French team does the French thing in response. Both teams regroup for the next episode, or round, and the French drive away to the Onion Song.
Really? The on of all the French marches, you picked the onion song? Real quick before I go, I'm aware that this episode came out quite a while ago, and the next one's not due till sometime out in the summer, I believe. But while you're waiting, if you have an anime tank itch you need to scratch, there's a game called Panzer Maidles that may be able to do that for you. It's a dating sim. Okay, cal calm down. Th that's not the best part. That is utterly hilarious and filled with tank and history references that's actually quite a bit of fun. I actually played it on a live stream a month or so back and really enjoyed it. It's written very well. I won't go through the main premise for you because y you have to experience that on your own just like I did. But I really do recommend it, and I believe it's currently on sale on Steam if you want to go pick it up. Also, thank you to OC Gangster and St. Gloriana's Gaming College for contributing to the video at various points. If you like this kind of thing, girls and panzer memes and historical memes, there are two channels that you should check out. I'll link them below. Also, thank you to my patrons. Without them, none of this would be possible. And of course, thank you to everyone watching and all of my followers for getting us to 200,000 subscribers. And I really hope everyone likes what's to come in the future. I can't thank you guys enough for what's come so far. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one next week. Oh, it doesn't show me getting shot.